You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. We are gathered here as advisors, as scientists. The kind of place we expect a ghost to like to wander around. Hey, we all know that we're gonna die, baby. I'll help you. I'm something of a witch. Welcome to Mission Spooky. I'm your fantastic host, JC. With me today, as per usual, is the queen of everything herself, Kiki. And our local cryptid expert, Cord. Uh, How you guys doing today? Just great. Yes. I'm in. You're in? I'm in. All right. What are you in? Existence. The zone. <laughs> A man, Jessica Walter, passed away today. Who? This morning, Jessica Walter. She played Mallory Archer on Archer. She was in Arrested Development. Oh, gosh. I've been yeah. on Facebook all day, so... That's really crazy. I can't believe that. Who is? <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Archer. Okay. No, I don't watch Archer. Oh my god, it's so funny. Oh, Archer is wonderful. Arguable. You might enjoy it. Arguable. I've watched a few episodes and I literally did not laugh once. But okay, you gave it a shot. I'm picky. Oh, there's also lots of frogs having sex all over my back deck. Nice Ribbit. frogs. Ribbit. There are pictures on Instagram if anyone cares. There's also a TikTok video. <laughs> Follow us on Mission Spooky TikTok if you're into that sort of thing. Wait, we have a TikTok now? <coughs> We've had a TikTok for like a month, man. What the it's hell? Official. <laughs> Is that like technically voyeurism since you're just filming them when they're not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they knew. They knew I was there. I announced. I was standing right in front of them. I was like shameful. Actually, the, the TikTok video is pretty much me saying like, well, in another episode of nature is getting more action than Kiki is, there are <laughs> lots of frogs having sex orgies all over my backyard. Wow. There were two pairs of them going at it. I was very upset. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm happy for them. Great. You know, I'm glad somebody's getting some action. That's great. Hashtag frogs of Instagram. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> uh, Yeah. So anyway. Yeah, we have a TikTok because I create little promos for our episodes and then put them up there so people can uh, listen to us. And hey, we, we've had we found a lot of listeners all over the world that, um, gosh, we got Pakistan recently. Interesting. You know, India is still a solid second place. Thank you so much for listening, India. We love you. Yes. We got Switzerland. We got Bangladesh. Sri Lanka. Denmark and Finland and Romania, Costa Rica, New Zealand, United Arab, Arab Emirates, and Kuwait and Pakistan and Indonesia, and Croatia and Thailand and Brunei and Singapore. <laughs> These are like newer. And then I was excited. We got Spain and France and Taiwan. And we've had listeners in Mexico for a while and Honduras for a while. So that's really cool. And of course, Japan, which we're going to be talking about today. So yay, Japan. Thank you for listening. And we've had Romania for a while and Brazil, and Russia, and Sweden, and South, and South Africa, and Germany, and Switzerland have listened to us for a long time, and Ireland, and Austria. Our tops are still U.S., India, U.K., uh, Canada, Australia, Norway, and Austria, and Ireland. Well done, guys. Thank you. Thank you for listening. That's a lot of places. <laughs> it is a lot of places. It is a lot of places. That's why I'm like, wow. I, th I just happened to look at it the other day, and I was like, holy crap. Like, we've added a bunch more um, countries in listening to us, so... Maybe you guys found us through catching some of our TikToks. I don't know, but whatever. It's been fun. It's been fun doing them. So, well, that's what matters. As long as fun's being had and our views are going up, those are the two things. <laughs> yeah, right. And our, and our views are going up because of it. Yay. That's what makes it so much fun. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just a chore. Just kidding, guys. Okay. So, Who's ready? Who's ready for the spookiness? I am. I am. <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to take a short break this time. This week, we're actually taking a short break because we are going to be doing a promo for I Know You podcast. And every week, host Kyle sits with a guest and learns about interesting professions and hobbies, everything from violinists to goat herders and paranormal people like us. As a matter of fact, I'm 
We'll probably be joining Kyle on his show to talk about food or ghosts at some point. So check him out now before I go on because he's actually interviewed quite a few people that I'm already friends with and it's been a blast. So so you're going to listen to his promo real quick and then when we get back, as promised, part two of haunted military bases in Japan. And then we're also having a little extra add on the end here. Not necessarily a military base, but still very, very cool. Hello, everyone. My name is Carl Highfield and I am the host of a podcast called I Know You. Every week, I invite a guest with an interesting expertise and learn all about their life and experiences. We have covered episodes about topics ranging from coral to cults to sexual health. They ask me some questions, I answer those, and then they tell me why I'm wrong. We talk about their expertise and the thing they have experienced and generally have a lot of fun. It's a comedy podcast, so the goal is to be funny, but at the same time, I learn a lot, which is great. So if you want to listen to me being an idiot every week while also learning something new, please check out I Know You on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast platform. For more information, you can visit my Twitter and Instagram on at IKYPodcast and my website, IKYPodcast.com. Ladies and gentlemen, see you soon. Available now the latest collaborative project by singer-songwriter Rob Wissenhunt. Cast of Eight, featuring Catherine Caldwell on backing vocals, Jason Stepp of Dog Fashion Disco on cello, and the legendary Mike Garson on piano. YouTube. Do I say welcome back? Yep. <laughs> Is that what we were waiting on? I'm like, do I usually? I know I welcome him back to the third <laughs> section, but God, do I do it for the second? Oh. Oh my God. Yes. Professional. I'm professional. I'm just bad at being a professional. I guess technically we make money off the podcast. I mean, Kiki does. The podcast does. We're still in the red. But uh <laughs> okay. Let's not beat around the bush the right. let's, let's be honest here. Kiki doesn't make shit off this podcast. Yeah, that's why I said we're still in the red. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, nobody's making any money off of this. This is still a labor of love and fun. So if we do, great. If we don't, that's fine too. Whatever. Word. Look, we have got to meet a lot of really cool people because of this podcast. And yeah, me. <laughs> we got a lot more cool people lined up. So yeah. Yeah, me, every week. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very JC thing to say, and I apologize for that. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> I enjoyed it. All right, so today we are going to be focusing on Okinawa, Japan, which honestly sounds pretty darn haunted on the whole. And I think it's really cool. The community there does a great job of respecting the space while also allowing visitors to come check out their more well-known haunts. So thank you, Okinawa. And I also think this is something we need to, you know, do more in our own community, which is just having respect for areas that are supposedly haunted. Because how many times have we heard about, you know, ghost hunters being buttholes? Like, I don't know, Dudley Town. <laughs> hey, don't go there. Right. <laughs> And I think Egg Egg Hill is an Egg Hill Church that I was complaining about, which I just found on another damn website saying that it was haunted and that the priest killed all these people. And I was like, no, no, he did not. That's all fake, guys. You need to take that off the damn list. 
anyway. It's only fake if you believe in facts. And as a person that doesn't, it's real to me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Then um, you have fun with your trespassing harassment. <laughs> nah, I'm way too lazy to do that. <laughs> because Mission Spooky only has $34 to get you out of jail. <laughs> Oh, woof. <laughs> you stuck there, son. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're getting out of that one, bud. Oh, man. I know I can't help. <laughs> I'm just going to be in jail forever. <laughs> Even though we all just got like, an, like some of us got a lot of money because we also have children. Yeah, I don't have children. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> it was great getting that extra $1,400 for my child. Ugh. I'm like, yeah, except it, you know how much he really costs? <laughs> So, so much money. <laughs> oh, Kids anyway. only cost money if you let them out of the basement. <laughs> That's what my mom used to say. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's terrible. Anyway, on to the good stuff. So it's just going to be me talking for a while? Get it? Because good stuff. <laughs> no. Oh. I thought you were going to say something like, oh, so you're going to play the B-52s? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think uh, they're a good band? Chord gets it, maybe, because they have that song, Good Stuff, Baby. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. I yeah. It. See, Chord got it. I yeah. Got it. I would say I dabbled in B-52s for a Yay. while. I saw them in concert. They were so great. Anyway, I digress away from the spooky stuff again. Japan. Japan. Okinawa. Okinawa. And I'm going to start with, okay, I'm going to ask the question first. I know the answer already because I wouldn't I wouldn't ask it if I didn't already know the answer, which is, do you guys do any research on hauntings in Okinawa? So I just did some research on hauntings in Okinawa. Like, Oh, good. Right okay. Now. So we're good. Oh, great. A video? Are you seeing the Okinawa ghost video of the security uh, camera on yeah. Kadena, Kadena Bay Air Force Base? Yeah. That shit is fucked up. I'm going to I'm going to talk about that. Wait, well, send me a let me, wait. Let me watch it. Oh. How you, oh. Yo. Right? What the f- It's fucked up. <laughs> that is interesting. Right? Wait for it because it it goes on. It goes on for a bit. That thing shows up 3 times. It's pointing at a camera. Okay, so there's my research. I'm good. That is interesting though. I mean, there's a few things that could be. No. Let me let me watch it. Let me let me finish. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's a. Ca- oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Just be quiet because it's pretty weird. Some of the things have been refuted at the bottom, and then if you read the rest of the comments at the bottom, all the things I'm going to talk about today about this particular base, there's so much shit that goes on here. This Air Force base is actually the one we're going to talk about the most because of all mm-hmm. the crap that goes on. And then I'll get into some of the things that um, people said it might be, but that's at the end here. So anyway. Okay, so we're going to go down the list of some haunted mil- military bases first, and I'm going to start with the shorter stories first. So the first location that I found quite a bit about was the Marine Corps Air Station Camp Foster. And at Futenma Housing, Oh, by the way, I would like to preface this by saying that I have listened to pronunciations of some of these words on multiple websites, and I'm taking the one that seems to be the most used. So I apologize if I don't get it 100% correct, because last time I got in some trouble because I was pronouncing an extra U sound when I shouldn't have been. So sorry. So this is Futenma Housing. There is a young Japanese soldier that haunts the barracks. He has been seen roaming the halls, while others have experienced furniture and items moving in several of the rooms there. He is often seen by guys who are doing their nightly walkthrough. We also have another samurai warrior in this location who's usually seen. They use the words trudging up the hill towards uh, Futenma housing. So maybe it's after a battle has been maybe lost or maybe he's been hurt and he's it's one of those where they think that he's just keep on, keep going on the same cycle. Like he just keeps going up the hill over and over again. He's often described as either looking mean or in pain. And he does not acknowledge the presence or existence of anything around him. Even vehicles will drive right past this area. He, That's why it seems like this might be a residual. Residual haunting. Yeah, yeah. it's a residual haunting. Yeah. Or it's stuck in a time loop of the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. There is also an older gentleman in a pea coat <laughs> that supposedly hangs out 
P-E-A coat, not a <laughs> P-E-E coat. Okay, not a coat made of piss. Now I'm thinking uh, of a coat made out of peas. Oh, my God. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> you know, that could be one of Kiki's quirks. I'll just talk about what pea coat means because apparently it's a funny, funny word, right? <laughs> it is. I think it is. It I've is. always thought it's a pea. It's, uh, it's a funny <laughs> word. Pea coat. Oh, God. Um. Anyway. Uh, he was made famous by an author and also a woman who lived there. And her name is Jane Hitchcock. And I would recommend her book at, at the end here. We're going to talk a little bit about that book and I will make that recommendation. But she's the one who said that when she was living on this base, that he would show up in her room and that he would often throw pennies or guitar picks at people who would walk past where he was. <laughs> That's kind of funny. It just sounds annoying. <laughs> Right? Like all of a sudden you're just like, ow. What the? Take this. So this one is a little weird and it actually has to do with her book. When she originally wrote the book, she placed this occurrence at a different base. But I, I think that the consensus would probably be that this is, this is now happening at Camp Henson. So since 2000, the story ha has changed a bit. So supposedly there is a gate at Camp Henson where a full-bodied apparition has been seen and talked to by many soldiers. The original story said that he was wearing World War II fatigues. More recently, it's said that those fatigues are bloodied, or they look like there's blood on them. The one thing that has never changed is that he will always ask any of the MPs who were at the gate for a light for his cigarette. And anyone who provided a light would get to see him vanish in thin air right in front of them. This ghost unnerved so many soldiers at that gate that it was permanently shut down. And even though no one's at the gate anymore and either there is a guard station and it's empty or I think they might even remove the guard station, but he will continually walk up to that same gate and repeat the same things, asking for a light, but there's nobody there to talk to anymore. So that seems another one of those like residual energy type things. But I like that story. Can you imagine this dude walks up to you that looks like a, you know, for all intents and purposes, he's a real person. He's completely tangible. And he's all like, do you have a light? And you go to light a cigarette and then he just poof, disappears right in front of your damn face. So what does he do to the people that don't have a light, though? I don't know. Because like I me, I never carry a light at on me. Yeah. <laughs> just, I, that would be more creepy. Like, go get it. Go get one. <laughs> oh, oh, Okay. I don't know. Maybe maybe he's always been super lucky and he's always picked somebody who had a lighter. I don't know. Good question. Apparently, someone has always attempted to find one for him. Oh. Perhaps that's the the trigger effect. Okay, this is funny now that I think about it, but I have personally, I have not smoked in like years and years and years. But if someone asked me for a light, I think I would instinctively still look for one even though i know damn well that i don't carry a lighter or matches with me anymore so maybe it's just that sort of like a like a common courtesy of you you pretend to look or you look even though you know damn well that you don't have one and then you can just then you then you look at the person and go oh shit i'm sorry i don't and then you know just a thought and then they disappear All right and then they fucking disappear and you're like Oof. okay that was cool or not depending on you know who you are <laughs> uh, but this is not the only place or only time that the military has moved something or shut something down because it's been overly haunted. Who writes that form, though? Like, why are we shutting this thing down? Too many ghosts. Like, <laughs> where, where's the form? <laughs> like, there has to be government documentation for somewhere written, too many ghosts. <laughs> too spooky. <laughs> You're going to want the spooky ghost form. That's uh, that's 2210 on that pile over there. Or perhaps it's form 2283. Oh. In commemoration of House 2283. Hey, I just read about this one. That was located on Cadena Air Force Base, or I should say Air Base. So perhaps someone who was previously in the military and who has been here can tell us if there was a form for this house because holy crap, <laughs> there are so many stories in this place. I, I say there's a couple of stories because nobody can quite find out if these things actually happened. And I would think that they were pretty heinous enough that there'd be 
a report that went with it. But if it's a military base, I'm not exactly sure if the public is privy to this particular information. It would be dependent on if I think the military wanted to release it. Again, I'm not really sure. I didn't I actually did not look that up. But the thought of it actually just right now is like, oh, you know what? This is not really a real, you know, these aren't cases that, that are maybe out in the public. But Two stories that are still told today. One suggests that in the 1970s, an officer beat his wife to death in this home. Another one says that a young girl was stabbed to death by her stepfather in this home. Some people will also go with a more plausible explanation, which is that the house is built on a burial ground and that those spirits cannot rest now. The more plausible, because this seems to be a big, not a problem, it's more like an issue in Okinawa. There are a lot of unmarked graves, but they're also graves that are marked and we'll get into that a little bit later this i don't think would be out of disrespect this would just be a very terrible coincidence there again another story of a samurai on a horse riding through the living room and then out the front door there is supposedly an apparition of a young woman that would wash her hair in the utility sink there are cries of children heard when no children lived in or near the home And this is the one where at one point there was a daycare center that was next to the house. And teachers would often say that children were constantly throwing their toys over the fence. And when they asked why they kept doing this, the kids would say that it's because the children playing in the front yard of the empty house wanted the toys. Uh. The important part being the empty house with no children at all wanted, you know, it's like kind of creepy. Right. One room of this house was always so cold that no one wanted to be in it. No one wanted to use it. At one point, it was a bedroom. It was so so super cold, even in the the summertime. The air conditioning was not even on. There were times when this house was empty and the air conditioning was off. And officers have said that they would go in there to, you know, check on things and whatever. And it would be just freezing all over the house. But this one room in particular was very, very bad. They just tore the room down. They just took it off the house and said, fuck it. (laughs) Just, nope, not doing this. Not again. (laughs) So eventually, no families want to be assigned this home because everybody knows the legend of this house. Nobody wants to live there. So it gets converted into a storage area for the house that's adjacent to it, right? Well, something I learned that Halloween is actually a pretty big deal in Japan, at least in Okinawa. And I thought that was pretty cool. So they have um, the weeks leading up to it. They have a lot of Halloween tours and things like that. So, of course, building 2283 is is a focal point of one of those tours. It is a tour guide, and this happened about 2000. She recalls when she has about 30 guests who are in the yard. She begins discussing the history of this house, all the hauntings and all the things people have ever seen. When a phone rings inside the house, <laughs> she said everybody fled for the tour bus and was like, we're done. <laughs> Yo, that's that's funny. Spooky. She did her due diligence. She's like, I made sure I, I asked around, was this staged? You know, did you guys know that, you know, I, you obviously know that I'm on tour. You obviously know that I was at the house and about what time I probably arrived at the house. So did you, did somebody set this up? You know, cause if so, it did scare the ever living shit out of like everybody, including me. <laughs> Uh, there was no phone line connected to it because it was a storage facility. That's pretty cool. Yeah. (laughs) Same house. Another tour guide in uh, the 90s said that something quote unquote similar. I get it though. It's like you're on tour. You have all these people standing in front of the house. This was when it was probably just not in use, but not quite a storage facility yet. So there were curtains up in the house and nobody's in it though. And everybody in the front yard sees the curtains open with nobody standing there same thing they left and they were like tour's over we're done (laughs) we've we've seen enough we're out that's funny you know you would think you would think during a haunted tour you would want that to happen (laughs) right you know it's like did i lie to you because here it is no false advertisement here right it does happen and you're like fuck I've never gone on many uh, like ghost tours but we did do some in Gettysburg and I was totally like sitting there like the story's cool and all but like where's the ghost (laughs) you know what I mean so if I was taking this tour and something happened it didn't really matter what happened to the point where the tour guide looked concerned about it be like oh rat this is what I wanted (laughs) 
in 2010, the house was finally demolished because no one wanted to do repairs on it anymore, neither Japanese nationals nor Americans on the base. And this marks just one time that the U.S. military chose to abandon something due to too many damn ghosts. Give me the too many ghost form. And I love it. I love that. (laughs) Give me that spooky ghost form again. (laughs) And if there isn't one, I think that the U.S. military should adopt form 2283 as your official too many damn ghosts. Let's tear it down or let's close it form. (laughs) And then I also want it to be like, you know, logged in there as a nature of the haunting. Well, children are constantly crying. I don't have any kids and now they're just my neighbor. Um, there's a young woman who likes to wash her hair in the basin and I don't know who she is and then she disappears. <laughs> there's also a samurai and a horse that just runs through the living room every once in a while. It's kind of freaky. I think four or five ghosts is enough to fill out the, you know, get it accepted. <laughs> so it is thought, going back to the idea of there being a burial site here, it is actually thought that there's a tomb that's across the street and that this was, there's a tomb of a samurai warrior. So that's sort of the thinking historically that kind of tracks. This one's sort of weird, and I'm, I, I, again, two different kind of stories about this happening on Kidena, but I don't know which one is true. They could both be an amalgamation of, like, two different things. But anyway, there's a golf course, if we've learned with quite a few military bases that there's golf courses nearby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people need a spot to relax. Exactly. This is either, in 1945, a group of high school girls who were, quote, pressed into service by the Japanese Imperial Army who committed suicide. Or this is the end of the war and the Americans take over the airfield and 17 volunteer nurses committed suicide in a cave that is adjacent to where the golf course is. But either way, there are these ghostly figures of women who are often seen out on the course. Sometimes they're in like a ring of of them they're usually always wearing white it's just not a hundred percent sure of which story is true if if either one and then we come to my favorite which is more recently too i think if i did you guys catch the the date on that thing the youtube video it was sometime in 2008 i think it said okay so we'll link this in to the show notes but there's a great security camera footage on youtube of a gate at cadena that had a very odd looking shadow thing (laughs) walking slash flying slash it was it's weird and i liked the comments underneath Uh, the one guy was basically like it's not a bug and i have to agree it's it's way too big for a bug it also the way that it changes directions and that actually looks like it's walking and also that in two different times you could tell where it was in front of something and you could not 100% see through it. There was a little bit of solidity there, but you could, but you could also it was there was an opaqueness to it. So it's it's weird. The only other thing that someone had mentioned was could it have been a bat? Because they have there's like a medium sized bat in that area. But um, again, a lot of the guys who were looking at this footage over and over and over again, they were commenting saying, "I've seen bugs on cameras. I've seen the bat on a camera. This is not what that is." This is weird. The big reason why I would say it's definitely not bat to me is because even when it's standing still, you don't see it like spread its wings to fly off, you know? Like, yeah, and the fact that it's still, <laughs> it's standing there for a minute. Yeah, the the video, whoever is adding the subtitles or whatever you want to call them on the video said it was human shaped, but it really wasn't human shaped. It's just kind of like a shadowy blob, but it doesn't really change shape where if you're a if if you look at a bat flying off it opens its wings like it like doubles in size when it goes to fly away you would see a very drastic change in size and shape if it were flying off and when it flew off in that video it definitely was the same shape same size it didn't change at all it just kind of left at one point when it's kind of going across the street I get what he's saying where it almost looks like there are two legs walking, but he had to slow it down for you to really see that because the first time around was really super fast. Yeah, I didn't really see legs walking. I'm going to watch this video for like a fourth time now. <laughs> about it. You know, I, I always say, obviously, it's not like 
conclusive evidence, but they it's messed up. Like it's okay. I'll put it to you this way, guys. I have seen people be like, Oh, here's an orb. This must be a spirit. And I look at it and be like, dude, no, I mean, it can't be a spirit. It's a friggin' bug. You know, like let's, let's be honest here. It's a bug. Yeah. This video the thing that really got me was it does not look like a bug. It doesn't look like anything that I've ever seen on video or, or even in a still photograph where I have a really good explanation for what it is, you know, and that's intriguing. I love that. So there is a final thing that we're going to talk about. Okay. Oh, let me, let me just tell you guys, there's a really good guide to these haunted sites and I already referenced her once. So I'll tell you the name of the book is called the ghosts of Okinawa. And that is by Jane Hitchcock again. And she lived in Okinawa from 1992 to 1995. A lot of the military based stuff comes directly from that book. And then also my personal research online and some Reddit stories and just basically piecing this all together from all the different places that this information comes from. And I, I could go on and on and on, but I picked the ones that reoccurred that to me is what makes it the haunting not so not so much like just oh one time this or that but if it's the repetition of these same people like all these officers and military personnel who are like yeah i've seen this like a million times i've seen this and this and this so oh yeah. like our video that we're talking about if you read the comments these people are like yeah i lived there i've seen this before this is crazy you guys caught it on camera so that's that's pretty cool or it's having entire tours of people experience something right that's a that's a big deal Yes. The last one I'm going to talk about is not necessarily a, uh, a military base, but it's one that we have to talk about because I had never heard of this place before. So maybe we have a lot of listeners who don't know this one. And it has a very long name <laughs> in Japanese, but Americans would refer to this as the Royal Hotel and could not find the person's name that was the quote unquote billionaire millionaire who started this whole process but there's remains of a 15th century castle and this guy says hey i have this great idea i'm going to build a zoo next to the remnants of this castle and i'm going to use the income from the zoo to help restore the castle huh well, this sounded like a great idea, right? True. Everybody was like, yay, let's do it. So it starts out as this very altruistic type thing, right? So let's have a, a zoo. We're going to use all the funds. They're going to do this other thing. And we're going to help restore this thing. But then the Okinawa Memorial Exposition comes in 1975. This is one of those, the world exposition. So there's people from all over the place coming in. And he decides that he's going to expand on his idea and turn this into a luxury hotel on the hillside of where this castle used to be. So the villagers at the time, and also monks from a Buddhist temple, they warn him and they say, you can't do that because you're going to be encroaching onto sacred land. You're going to be encroaching into areas that have tombs. So let's not do this. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a good idea to start. No, but what does he do? Done did it. He done did it. Anyway. <sighs> So he begins this work and of course it turns into even bigger and bigger and bigger projects. So now it's going to be a resort. It's going to have a casino. It's going to have a water park. It's still going to have a, a zoo. He pours millions into this project. But again, this whole time everything's going on, all this building's going on. The Buddhist monks are saying, you should not, <laughs> you should not build here. Bad things are going to start happening. And what happens? Well, bad things started happening to the point where workmen started to leave the site. Like what kind of bad things? What were we talking uh, about here? People died. Oh. oh, mysterious construction accidents happening. I believe this is the one where there was also somebody mentioned something about there was dynamite being used to blow into the side of the mountain to then to start laying foundations. And that was part of the accident. And a lot of people got killed. They got blown up. So then, of course, nobody wants to work on the site anymore. It just went into it, He bumped bankrupt because of it. He couldn't find anyone to finish it. And no one wanted to finish it. They were like, fuck it. It is completely abandoned even to this day. You could previously go there can't you now we'll get into that so <laughs> so i mean it's still there mm -hmm. it's totally seeable if you are not in the u.s military you may go there because the u.s military issued a command that nobody could go there and do you know why spooky ghost too spooky list it made perfect sense because too many people were getting hurt. <laughs> oh, well, that's because they didn't file the proper spooky paper paperwork, probably. <laughs> the, the Marine Corps basically said, due to the dilapidated conditions, we are tired of our guys 
coming back to base with broken arms and legs and hands and feet because they shouldn't be yeah, climbing I guess, into places that are dilapidated. I guess a dangerous construction site would make sense for a lot of people got hurt and not it's too spooky. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say this, and this is where sometimes the military gets itself in a little tiny bit of trouble when it comes to not telling the whole truth. There is a great resource for people who are interested in um, you know, military anything. It's called Stars and Stripes. It's like a basically a magazine online. You only get so many like freebies, quote unquote. I found out about the military saying, you know, putting the putting the kibosh on people going there from this news article. And it was just said, oh, well, there's too many incidences of our guys and girls going up there and then they get hurt and then they come back and then, you know, well, they're out of commission for a while because they have broken limbs. However, when the newspaper went to interview them and ask, well, can you provide details of the incidents? You know, because honestly, it might be important for even people in the area to know what the injuries are and what happened so that even though you said not to go, they may still want to go, you know, they're st- they still may break the rules. So let's find out what happened and tell everybody. And the military refused to give details of any of the incidents that happened. So all you're doing is, per- is perpetuating the idea that this place is like super haunted. <laughs> it is definitely creepy there are a lot of photographs online which due to someone that i know recently getting in a huge amount of trouble for just providing photographic evidence even though they were citing their sources mission spooky will never ever put up anything that's photographic unless i've taken the photographs because i don't want to have to pay five thousand dollars in uh, in fees because of that <laughs> because yeah let's not <laughs> yeah I, I'm not making any money off this podcast, so, you know, get blood from a stone, people. Anyway, but you can go online and you can look at other people's photographs, and I will be happy to provide links to those websites because it is really interesting to see how nature is just sort of taking it over. The other thing, too, is there is a very poisonous snake that lives in this region, and apparently that's also a huge problem, too. You should probably not go there. Yeah, don't go there. <laughs> The end of that story is, though, that this guy went broke and wound up in an insane asylum. Isn't that how it always ends? I mean... I liked a couple of things, though, about this whole just reading all these articles and getting into this is that they are very serious about ghost hunting in Okinawa. They will tell you, do not go anywhere. Don't don't go to any of these places without a partner, Mm -hmm. you know, somebody else. As in this place, it can be, like, super dangerous in general. But I also like that here they have built several shrines within the building. And one of the places that I will try to remember to link that into is that this guy went up there and he did find the actual, they're not really ruins. They're, they look, they actually look pretty good considering that no one's been taking care of them really. The burial sites that the monks were talking about, they are up there. So that's not a fairy tale that's for real and in light of that there have been several shrines put up within the con- the old construction there to sort of appease the spirits i thought it was very nice yes and that's what i have for the part two of military ghosts guys so does that mean we're gonna be taking a trip to japan and going on spooky ghost tours duh <laughs> yeah and there's also a tree i have to climb that's right no jc's not allowed to go to that tree i'm no going to that, that fucking tree, tree. No climbing that tree. I'm going to climb that tree like it's my goddamn job. Boy. You <laughs> just got me. <laughs> I just want to see a samurai. I don't, I don't want you to even see that tree. Go to that tree. No tree. I say that I want to see a samurai ghost, but then I feel like when I do see a samurai ghost, I'm going to be like, somebody peed in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Someone pissed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think i'd be okay with the one that's just kind of like chilling the one from the last episode where he's charging down the hallway at you if i'd be okay with that one but the one is just kind of walking around i think i'd be all right with yes if he pulls his uh his ghost sword out and starts running at me i think i'd be okay with that but see then the the first thing that goes to my mind when you say ghost sword i'm like oh god what if he's like the Nazgul and I actually get stabbed with that thing? Damn it. <laughs> you freaking nerds. I know. <laughs>
All right. So our musical guest today is Slow Mo Sapiens again with what I think is just the absolute perfect song to go with this, which is the rabbit hole. Uh Because that's what I went down when I started doing this investigation in the first place. (laughs) And then when we get back, a little bit of Spooky Squad news, tell you guys some new stuff that's going on. And if y'all have any shout outs. Welcome back, you beautiful sons of guns. Uh, thank you. I'm happy to be back. We're happy to have you back, Cord. Thank you. I'm forever grateful for your presence and, and your positive can-do attitude and just, just you. I'm so happy for you. Same, JC, but you can leave now. Oh, okay. Money's on the table. <laughs> <laughs> you can leave now. All right. So, hey, I'm going to make some really cool announcements. Um, yay. Yay. <laughs> I like cool announcements. They're better than lame announcements. I need to drink more during these episodes. Okay. Me so. too. You know, it's coming on about a year since I did my two bottles of mead in one episode. Well, <laughs> two bottles of mead for, I think it was, it was over the course of recording two episodes. It was not. No. Was, wasn't it? I we drank didn't. one for one bo- one no. episode and then I drank the next. No. <laughs> Look, I was severely drunk. I don't know how that stuff worked, but I was drunk. Uh, Okay, guys. So if you go back in time to hold on, let me tell you, episode, um, I was definitely not drunk for this. No, you were sober or close to sober. I only had one drink. Yes, that that was like when COVID was actually problem problem. Like it was everything was just shut down. I personally had just realized that you could order alcohol. Uh, from from a local distillery and have it shipped to your house. <sighs> that was great. <laughs> so I mean, I still can. They they've haven't re- they haven't lifted that restriction at all. So, but yeah, we were supposed to do a second one and we didn't because you got so drunk. <laughs> Allie had to jump in for me because yeah. I was unable to continue recording. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So this is episode twenty one called uh, the King George. No, I'm sorry. That was King George. It was after that. That was Hawk Mountain. Where the hell was this? I don't remember. I know you don't. It was accidental discharge. Remember the headless. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, that wasn't. That was May. You got your March and May confused. That was May fifth, episode twenty six, the headless horseman of Paoli. Oh no, that's the one that I drank in. Okay. Then you drank in May twelfth, the General Wayne in. Yep. JC takes on a quarantine experiment involving mead. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Episode 27, folks. Yeah. So if you want to go back and listen to that shenanigans, uh, yes, we had to have Ellie step in because you got so, so wasted that we couldn't record a second one that night because you were in the bathroom on the floor laughing (laughs) to yourself. Yes. It was great. And it's about time I do that again. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Yeah. The other, the episode before that one was me drinking absinthe from a local distillery, which ironically, we're going to bring that back to Tyler Strand, who also just had absinthe the other day live on Instagram. And I told him about said distillery. Yeah. Good times. Anyway. Yeah. So we're opening up a Teespring store because I personally like the setup there better for t-shirts and cl- like clothing in general so the red bubble store is going to be just our stickers and coffee mugs and a couple of things like that and i'm adding new designs all all the time almost every day we also have a new instagram quick horror stories thing that i've been doing and those are going to be somehow connected to a new monthly design that i'm doing so right now if you haven't caught on, I think there's like five of them up by now. Pro- well, probably more than that now. But there is a theme there. And by the end of this month, I'll have a new t-shirt that ties in with our Instagram theme. And I hope to do that every month since I now pretty pretty much uh, don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, retail. Yay. Yeah. 
we just had our 900 views on YouTube milestone, considering that I haven't really done that much with YouTube other than just slap the stuff up there. That's, I'm really happy. Thank you guys for, if you happen to be also catching things over there. Now, episode 41, which was the Hex Hollow Murder. I put that up on YouTube with a very special introduction from me. So you get to see exactly how nerdy I actually am. And then I think instead of doing intros to each one of those with the video, since we have TikTok, I think I'm just going to be throwing those um, on TikTok and then I can also throw them on YouTube as a YouTube short. So that just kind of works out a little bit better because then if you don't feel like listening to me talk about nerd shit or you don't give a crap about an introduction to the uh, video, then you could just skip over them, make it easier on everybody. Yeah. And we're super close to bringing you something a very special that is also a combined eff- effort from multiple, what's going to be multiple podcasts. And I'm very excited about it. Yes. Also kind of excited about it. I wouldn't say very, but like I am excited, like, but I don't want to overdo it, you know? <laughs> so I'm just kind of excited <laughs> about it. Like I'm neutral. Well, you shouldn't be neutral. <laughs> It's all about Cord. <sighs> Cord has his own segment. Soon. Yes. Soon. Soon he will. I don't really have any shout outs in particular. You guys have anything to add? Uh, Japan is spooky. <laughs> I've been, I've just been working and sleeping. So I, yeah, I got nothing, nothing special to, to shout out. Um, Cause I live a boring life. That's the spirit. That's sad. Yeah, it's okay. Make make something up that's exciting so I can put that in the podcast. Okay. Well, then, I recently got murdered by a nine-foot-tall lumberjack man, and I'm a ghost. Try harder. <laughs> Look, you told me to make something up, but that's exciting. I think Good that's worse. pretty exciting. Meanwhile, the cord is looking up something exciting. Okay, well then, taking us out again today. <laughs> <laughs> Just cut that silence. Damn, son. Cut it. No, leave no. the silence in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just... This is how long we just sat and waited for nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for, some, for something to happen. And we wonder why our numbers just suddenly plummet. We're like, these people suck. Well, it's because JC just said he got me at all. (laughs) So we're down a host. Unless he's going to continue on as the ghost of JC. That could be a thing. (laughs) There's JC's new segment. What what am I doing as a ghost, (laughs) Dad? How do ghosts work with JC's ghost? (laughs) How do ghosts work? Well, in ghost news... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is now a science podcast about ghosts. It already is. What are you talking about? No, now it's it's factual science. It's JC experimenting oh with how do ghosts work. Yeah, with, science with and ghost, ghost world. Of JC. Okay. It's just me making like a paper mache volcano, but in ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what does this have to do ghost with figuring science. out what you are? <laughs> <laughs> it's ghost science. We're just wearing a sheet. <laughs> uh, oh, we should do this. Let's make it happen. I mean, I need, I need TikTok content. Get on that shit. Come on. Uh, you know, you're supposed to post TikTok three times a day. Who has time for that shit? I ain't got time for that. Fuck. Um, yeah, I don't have time for that. No, not have... three times a day. No. no. I don't have time to do it once a day. I don't even have time to have a TikTok because I don't have a TikTok. I hate that app with an undying passion. So that's all you, girl. (laughs) That app might get us more listeners. So you shut your whore mouth. (laughs) I have 35 followers already. Okay. Don't hate on anybody for having it. (laughs) Just I won't. I'm so far behind on the app game. I'm not, I just don't care to learn any new. Cord just found out about Pokemon Go three. I don't even God <laughs> three minutes no, ago. Not. I, I I don't even have an 
like an Instagram. Like, and as somebody who is a semi public figure as a pro wrestler, like it, <laughs> that's some very important stuff to have is social media. And I don't have any of it. I just discovered Reddit like a year ago. Oh boy. Meanwhile, Mission Spooky already has a uh, an OnlyFans. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Are we, yeah, we we have an OnlyFans. Yeah, are we are we dropping sexy ghost pics? Is that what? I, I if you guys can get me sexy ghost pics, that's what's going on the OnlyFans account. I'm gonna yes. be naked, but where is she? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's just gonna be a bunch of uh, pictures of me sexually harassing JC. <laughs> going, going ghost hunts. <laughs> that's all it's gonna be. I'd be like, is there a fifty cent tier? Because that's. <laughs> hey, fifty cents is still more than we're making without it. So fuck off. Hey. <laughs> I'd pay fifty uh, cents to watch us do dumb shit. Me too. Well, go <laughs> do dumb shit, and let's let's go. Come on. Well, I gotta wait for the gear to show up. Okay. Fair enough. I um I it was a dare. It was a late night and I had some gin and tonics and I I was in a Discord group and one thing led to another and then Mission Spooky has an OnlyFans account. I Oh my god. I there. wasn't a hundred percent sure where that was going, but <laughs> it's just there. Is there anything on it right now? No, no, it's just it's just sitting there waiting, <laughs> you know, for when we, you know, look, I'll look, sign in with Google. Look, I'm doing it right now. Yeah. Let's go to, let's go to Amazon and let's <laughs> order a white sheet <laughs> king size because I'm a king. <laughs> <laughs> All three of us could be a ghost under a king size sheet, you psychopath. <laughs> Oh, $32.97? Ooh, microfiber. That's fancy. Dude, you gotta get California the King flat size, flat sheet. You gotta look up the thread count, my man. Do you want high thread count or low? You want high, high right? Yeah. What? I look big I'm number dumb. good. Don't you know that? Not in golfing. Okay. Uh prove it. You got me there. Big number still good. They hit ball far. Say I hit three hundred. Big number good. Big number good. Yeah. So, um, uh, trust me, I'm naked. That's what that's what we'll call it. And you guys just take photographs of yourselves with sheets over you. Uh, yeah. So, Spooksters, let us know. <laughs> let us know if that sounds like a good idea. Trust us, we're naked. At our OnlyFans. Um, and then in different places, like uh, pick some abandoned buildings, you know, you don't even know. You don't even know. We might make a shit ton of money because it's silly stupid. I will do it. <laughs> I'm also not opposed to it. Oh, my God. I love it. Yeah. So anyway, good times. Mission Spooky. Only fans. All right. So as I was trying to say, taking us out again today, <laughs> it's the perfect song uh, that goes perfectly with accidentally signing up for an OnlyFans for no reason other than a dare and you were drunk. Rabbit Hole by Slowmo Sapiens. Love these guys. Uh, go support them on Bandcamp, please. And stay spooky and don't die. But if you do, contact us by joining our OnlyFans. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that sounds good. Uh, <laughs> If you could, please contact us via messages on OnlyFans. Thanks. Well